In this video, I'm going to explain a few things about rebar annotation. And as you know, uh, 3D modeling pro uh, programs, the basic idea is that you model uh, your structure in 3D. And once you're satisfied with the model, once you're okay uh, with the model, you basically move on to the creation of your drawings. And the drawings are supposed to be just like windows into the model, and then uh, you can do the various things like annotating them and dimensioning them and stuff like that. So in Commosis also, you can create drawings. You can create as many drawings as you want, and you can import uh, the various views from the model. Uh, and the views can have their own filters, and that's a separate topic. But here what I've done is I have uh, imported two views from the drawing. One is a plan view in which I have my rebars. Uh, let me go and change the line thickness so that it shows the line thickness. Yeah. So uh, I have my rebars in the plan view. And then there's a sectional view in which I'm looking at the rebars as dots or as lines. Uh, these are these are this is very typical of uh, reinforced concrete. When you're working in sectional views, you're basically looking them looking at them in the form of either dots or lines. And when you're looking at them in the plan view, then you're looking at them in the form of many lines. So this like this particular position uh, goes from here to here, uh, and whatever the position number is. So once uh, I have imported it like that, I can obviously not leave it like that. I need to annotate it. And I'm going to be talking about uh, in this video about the various annotation features. And I'll be going going through these annotation features manually. We have uh, talked about the automatic commands uh, elsewhere, where you can automatically annotate these things uh, the way the program does it with some algorithms. But if you if you don't like that and you want to uh, do it manually, then I'm going to show that and talk about the various options which you have regarding those annotations. Now, at the moment uh, in Commosis, we have, if you go to the annotation menu, we have five different types of uh, annotations. There's type one, there's a modified type one as well, but let's, let's call both of these type one. Then there's type two, type three, type four, and type five. And as you can see on the screen as well, as is probably understandable from the icons, Type 1 is for situations like the plan view, in which you're looking at uh, rebars like this. You, they, you, you can see the entire range for, from, on which they are placed. And you, can, you see, basically, you see the rebars as, uh, as lines. If this, is the, uh, if this is the kind of bar you want to annotate, you will be using type 1. Uh, similarly, for when you're looking at from the sectional view and you're looking at, at the dots, then you will be using type 2. If you're in the sectional view and you're looking at it, uh, looking at the lines, then you will be using type three. And I'll explain type four is for stirrups and type five is a general type. So when you're looking at in the, looking at rebars in the plan view, like we are right now, like I said, we will be using the type one type annotation. And this in this annotation, what you usually do is what you want to see on your drawing is that instead of seeing all the bars. You want to see one representative bar, bar at any location of your choice, and you want to see an arrow which basically gives you the range uh, across which it will be placed. So you want to see one bar, and you want to see a, a range arrow. That's what you want, want to do. So the way to use the command is you basically select the bar you want to place, you want to annotate, and then you just press the type 1 button. And the moment you do that, uh, you can actually now start selecting points. So the first point you want to select is where you want the, the bar to be placed. Now, since it's a free point, uh, you, you don't necessarily have to uh, snap to any one of the snappable points. If you want to snap to a free point, let's say you want to snap over here, then you will need to press the Alt key since it's, it's a free point. So you press the Alt key and you just press at that point. And the moment you do that, uh, the, the range is... Uh, sorry, the, the, the range is decided for you, not the location of the bar. So this is where it will put the range. And then you, you can place the bar anywhere you want. Let's say you want to put it over here. So you press the Alt key again and you uh, click over there. And when you do that, the original bar is removed, uh, the original set of bars which you were seeing. And instead of that, you see this. You see an, uh, a range arrow that this bar is basically going between this and this. And what you see is one of the bars. And is, uh, besides that, you also see this annotation that this is 10 feet 20 at a spacing of 500 and the position number is 15. 
these are the this is the kind of yeah you can move this around obviously so for example if i were to just select this uh, range bar i can just move it around i can uh, even after creating it I, I can decide to move it if i select this bar i can move it around i can move it a bit to the left for example and by doing so i can uh, basically put it anywhere i want to now one thing you can do is that if you select this range line uh, which also you can see if I mean the moment I select it, this text is also selected. When I double click on the range line and I play with the, this parameter over here, I can uh, if I select to left, this text is moved to the uh, to the left side of the rebar and I can position it to the right side of the rebar as well, which is the bottom, or I can position it by default, which was to, uh, at the center. So these three options are available, but more than that, you can actually go in, select the text, and actually move it any way you want. Uh, so if you want to find a better place, if you if you feel it's not this is not a good place, then you can move it to the left or to the right, and you can basically place the text wherever you want to. Now, once you've moved the text around manually to some position, if you if you feel that you're not comfortable with that, you can just double click and say clear text movements and apply. And once again, it goes back to the default center position. Now there is this option over here called label position, and what this can do for you is if you if you try another one, for example, it can reverse the order. So it instead of putting the position mark at the end, it can bring it to the to the front. What it's telling you is it is that there, there are ten bars of phi twenty spaced at five hundred millimeters. So you can try this one, or you can try this one, in which case it will take it to the other side, and or you can try uh, this one, in in which case it will reverse. So these kinds of options are available. But uh, let me bring it back to the first one. But from from over here, you can actually decide on what you want to show. So if you want to say, if you don't want to show this part mark of 15, then you say you remove the flag from draw position uh, labels. When you do that, this 15 is removed and only the 10 v 20 at 500 is shown. Uh, let me bring that back. And you, what you can say, I don't want to show the count, for example. So in that case, it'll just say v 20 at 500. If you don't want to do that and you want to say draw the distance, you, uh, you don't want to show the distance, then the 500 will disappear and all it will say is 10 feet 20. And similarly, you can draw test backgrounds and you can uh, you can uh, draw the arrows and this and that. These kinds of features you have in which you can basically decide what you want to do that. And if all of them are not exactly according to your liking and you want to do uh, something different, then you have this option of custom annotation. And these need to be inputted in a different uh, in a different way. You can create as many custom annotations as you want, and then you can select one of those. And for example, you can have a multi-line, or you can have some different order. You can have some standard text written in it as well. But using these most frequently used options, you can quickly change uh, the look of, the look of this uh, labeling. Now uh, these bars are getting in our way. So what we can do is just select them, se select type one, press the Alt key which gives me the range and then pl place them, select this one, press that, press the Alt key like that. And very quickly I can uh, basically go through. I can press the Alt key like that and like that. So as you can see, I can just keep, keep creating these uh, annotations and uh, it's gonna take me a while. Obviously I've sh uh, I haven't shown you the automatic way of doing this, but if, the basic idea over here is that all these annotations are totally customizable. You can move them around later uh, if you want to find a better position for them. And the labels are also completely uh, customizable as well. So uh, the purpose was basically to show you this type one annotation command. And now I'm going to move on to uh, the type two and type three commands. But before I do that, before I move, move on to type two and type three, let me just quickly remind you of this auto annotate viewport feature as well, which is very, very handy. And all you need to do is Basically, select the viewport. These are the viewports, which are basically viewports into the model. If you've got two viewports in the drawing right now, all you need to do is just select the viewport and it will automatically find. So, for example, in this viewport over here, you've got uh, rebars in uh, of type 2 and type 3, basically. You don't have type 1. But in this particular one, we have type 1. And it could be a mixture as well. You could have a view in which some of them are type 1 and some of them are type 2 and type 3. But it'll, it's going to find all those out itself. All you need to do is just select the viewport, which you can do by selecting, clicking anywhere inside the black area, or just selecting directly the blue one. And once you do that, all you do is just press auto annotate. And the moment you do that, what we were just doing one by one, it will automatically find suitable places for all the bars 
uh, for you very very conveniently and it's, it's going to ensure that there are no clashes obviously if the scale has been chosen properly and there is place available it's going to find a place uh, for these and this is extremely key. what if you notice what would have taken me perhaps maybe 15 20 minutes to one by one go and find suitable places for all the bars it's just taken me uh, a second basically and if i want to remove if i want to get back to the original position if i just select everything like that and press enter and it, I can select the text and it, it tells me that right now you've got rebar annotation type one as well. It could give me other options, but this is all I have right now. When I double click on that, it basically selects, this is on the fly filtering, which we have in the model side as well. And once we've got them selected, if I just press delete, the annotations will be deleted and we will get back to the original, uh, the original way the drawing was originally uh, imported from the model. Now let's move on to type two. Type 2, what we call type 2 in Commerces is the, are these dots. So whenever you're working in a sectional view and you look at, you're looking at the rebar in the form of um, these round bars, basically, that's what we call type 2 annotation. And for that, we have this type 2 annotation command. And all you need to do is basically select, a, select a, a bar which looks like a dot first and just go to your type 2 and immediately it'll start showing you the annotation and then you can click anywhere to basically uh, place it on the screen. Now, once again, if I double click on this type two annotation, you have all those features. So if you want to draw the position marks or you don't want to draw them, if you want to draw, show the count or you don't want to show the count, it will depend on what you, which flags you check. If you want to show the distance or not show the distance like the one in the previous one. And over here also you have this, uh, this is a slightly different one. You have the option of showing all the bars. So we've chosen five bars. If I select that, then all the bars will have these, these vertical lines. This is a five bar, uh, these are five bars, so we'll have uh, all five. We can choose to select only the first and the last, in which case it'll show up like this. Or you can choose the first two and the last two, in which case it'll show up like that. And then you can give it a, a further angle if you want to. Uh, sometimes there's a lack of space and you want the things start getting, uh, things start clashing. So what you can do is you can create some space for yourself by giving an angle to the left or, or to the right. And by this, by doing this, then you can. Uh, create a cleaner drawing uh, in some cases. Once again, you also have these options which we talked about earlier. You can you can reverse the sides. You can uh, take it to the to the bottom or to the top. And uh, this is very similar, so I don't need to repeat what I said. Basic idea is, and once again, you have this custom annotation over here where you can uh, basically define your own type uh, as you wish, and uh, then that particular label will be displayed rather than these standard uh, labels. Now there is uh, there is one neat little trick in in reinforced concrete. A lot of times these uh, bars are aligned. So we've got five bars over here at the top and uh, at the bottom also because of the symmetry, we've got the same five bars with the same position number. So uh, in in those situations, what you can do is you can select both the bars, the bottom one and the top one, and press the type two one. And what it'll do is it'll go through both. It'll take the lines through both, and it's going to put this extra two into five bars of v20 so you can have to save space on the bottom side for example if you didn't want to uh, if you wanted to annotate them together in in one part then you can be, use this uh, little now let's talk about type 3 type 3 in commosis is when you're looking in a sectional view and you're looking at a bar in the form of a line so type 2 was when you're looking at the bar in the form of dots or circles and type 3 is when you're looking at the bar in the form of a line now you might say that even type one, I was looking uh, at lines, but th the difference between type one and type three is that you look, you're, you're looking at many bars. Uh, you, you, uh, you're looking at them uh, in the form of a line, but you can see many of them because you're looking at the plan view. But in the sectional view, you're looking at it as a line, but you can't see the rest of them. They're, they're behind this line. So that's the difference between type one and type three. And when you do, when you have that dif difference, you don't, uh, you, you can't do the typical type one type annotation in which it gives a range because you, you're not seeing the range in this case. So for that case, uh, what you do is you just select the bar and you press the type three button. And now you can select any point on the bar by pressing the alt key. Let's select this one and then select another point over here. And what it's going to do is it's going to uh, give you this little uh, arrow. You can, you can go and modify the type of the arrow, for example. You can uh, give it a different style. Once again, you have all these draw the position labels and count numbers and distances, and you can turn them on, on and off. You can have your custom fields if you want. 
once again you have these options of putting it to the left or to the start point or to the center or to the end point like that uh, so you have the same options basically but the the place where you use this is um, is when you're looking at it from a sectional view when you're looking at a line but you're not seeing the rest of the lines the rest of the lines are right behind it so you don't see the entire range like you see in the type 1 case but over here you just see one of those bars but you don't see it in the form of a dot you see it in the form of a line and for those cases we have type 3 type 4 is for stirrups when you want to give the range a dimension of the stirrups kind of thing in which you're you're looking at many stirrups this is not uh, you can uh, this is different from type 1 uh, although you might think that it's, it's similar you're also looking at the the bar segment from from the from a plan view kind of way but this is a specialized one in which you can you can give a dimension to the stirrups the range and type 5 is basically just um when you only when it's when you just want to randomly select a particular bar for example and you want to give it a type 5 uh, type say location you can give it uh, you can give it any uh, I mean, you can start off so let me just uh, you can start off from that point i just started off randomly but you can start off it from any point on the screen and you can give that selected bar the position number of that bar using this uh, and you can also use this to give uh, the custom annotations as well by the way so these are the five types of um, annotations which we have in commerces the most commonly used ones are, like i said the one in the plan type one the one in the section dots type two and the one in the section lines type three and type four and type five are also used occasionally and what i just told you about this auto annotation command which worked beautifully for the plan view when we just went in and we just said auto annotate and it immediately created that we can use the same one in the sectional view as well all we need to do is just for example if i were to go in and just say auto annotate immediately my all my bars depending on what they are uh, are annotated uh, as shown in the uh, in the drawing so these are very handy commands and they can be used uh, very quickly to give us um, the results that we want uh, and you can also modify them later like we talked about you can you can do all kinds of move, move them around change the change the uh, change what they contain you can move uh, move the position number to the left or to the right or even create your custom field so this was a brief summary of uh, the rebar annotation scheme which we uh, which we use a lot in dimensioning like i said most of the time you will be using this auto annotate but when you need to do them manually, when there's a very, very complicated situation, then you can use these type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, type 5 uh, commands manually as well.